Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. So this is the second video of making a no-scope knife in Roblox, and in this video I will be showing you how to animate your knife throw. And with this animation, we will also be using animation events. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get right into it. Okay, so let's get started with our animation. And the way we're going to animate for our knife throw is by setting up a rig and then using the built-in animation editor to create an animation. So go to plugins, build rig, doesn't really matter which rig, I usually do R15 block rig, and it should spawn a rig, here we go. I'm gonna go to model and then turn off draw on top and constraint details whatever so we just can't see all those dots which are attachments i'm pretty sure and so now we have our rig we now need to go to plugins animation editor and select our rig right here to animate and it doesn't matter the name so what i want to do with this animation is make it flexible because this is not going to be a basic animation it's going to be something where you wind your arm back but depending on when you let go of left mouse click your arm will wind forward again to look like you're throwing the knife so the longer you hold left mouse button the longer your arm is going to be going back and the way we're going to do this is using something called animation events and animation events allow any keyframe in your animation to communicate with a script using a special function and I will show you that in just a minute. So the first thing we have to do is go to the second number right next to the keyframe line right here. This is the duration of the animation. I'm going to set mine to four seconds. And then I want to go to these three dots. Go to set animation priority action. What this will do is this will allow our animation to have precedence over all other animations. So for example, if the player is walking and like the arms are animated when we play this animation it'll play over the walking animation so the walking animation won't even show and that's exactly what we want since it's a tool animation and so what i'm going to do is first in the first keyframe at zero zero i'm going to take my right arm and just angle it up a little bit i'm actually going to turn my rotate like constraints off by going to model and then unchecking this check mark so i can just move this freely because Accuracy does not really matter. So I'm just gonna jiggle the upper the lower arm and upper arm into the default tool position Just so they are stuck there Whenever we do something and then I'm gonna go all the way to the three second mark and then take my upper arm and Just rotate it all the way back and then just kind of jiggle this as well and the reason I'm jiggling my arm is because if you don't do this your player your character if it's like for example running again the upper arm which is this part right here will be stationary in this position but the lower arm will still be trying to execute the run animation and it'll look really really stupid it's happened to be before you don't want that to happen and keep in mind as well with this animation i'm leaving a lot of extra space because for some reason animation events don't work towards the end of an animation so that's just something to keep in mind. And so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the one second mark, like right here. And I'm going to right click and like the keyframe area and go to add animation event here. And this animation event is going to be named charge. And we're going to send in a parameter of one. So the more charge that you have when you're winding up your animation, the bigger the hitbox of the knife will be when you throw it. And the hitbox that I'm speaking of is, if I go into service storage and go to knife, it's the root part. The root part will have a bigger hitbox. And so we have our animation here at one second. Now we need to go to two seconds and add the exact same animation event. So go to add animation event here after right clicking. And then you want to click add event and then the charge will show up. You click that and we can set the parameter as two. And then we can go all the way to three seconds Oh, I undocked that by, let's go all the way to three seconds. Let's go add animation event here, add event, 
charge parameter of 3. So once you reach one of these keyframes, one second, there is a special function that is get marker reached signal for an animation event or animation on a rig. And this will this will fire and we can store our parameter, our charge parameter in a script. So one, two, or three. And three would be the highest hitbox, one will be the lowest. What we also need to do is when you're charging up the knife, you want the knife to stop. Like for example, over right here. You want it to stop. You want it to stop your arm from moving any farther back or any farther forward. And we're going to add another animation event. Because in your code, you can pause an animation. But we need to know exactly when to pause it. So we're going to go, it doesn't matter. Don't make your animation event anywhere towards for the four second mark. Make it like right after the charge mark. For some reason, it doesn't work. I've just noticed that from my testing. So I'm going to add another event. And this event is going to be pause animation. And this, the reason it's long, like a long name like this is because who knows what generic pause variable there is or whatever. So I'm just making this a nice pause animation event. And there ha there's not parameters because we're just checking for this event, not what parameters it has. And there we go. So this is our animation. Now what you want to do is go to the three dots, click export. And I'm going to create a new animation. We're going to name this knife throw animation. It doesn't matter what you name it, but it's my knife throw animation. And I can finish this. I can copy this link. Because you need this link when you're trying to get your animation in game. You can also get it from the Roblox website, I'm pretty sure, but I just always get it from here. So here we go. And actually, I forgot to show you. This is what the finished product looks like. So if I go to the beginning and I press space to run it, here you go. And you may be asking, how is it going to look like he's throwing the knife? What we're going to do is once you reach this pause animation marker, we're going to reverse it. And actually, now that I see it, what might happen is it might not reach the pause animation marker since there's no keyframes after this. So I would go to four, the four second mark, go to your rig, and just jiggle your lower arm and upper arm, just so the animation plays through. I don't know why you have to do this, but from my testing, you gotta do So since I changed it, and this is good to keep in mind, whenever you change something about your animation, you have to go to the three dots and then export, and then you just override, like this is the animation I want, my knife through animation. I just click it, and it uploads to this animation, so it overrides it, and you can copy the code again. And there you go. So now we have our code, I'm gonna get rid of the animation editor, and now let's go to starter pack, starter pack, and then our knife. Click the plus arrow on our knife and add an animation. And we're going to go to the properties. Oh, by the way, I changed my properties from the left side to the right side. It just seems a little bit easier. It gives you more space to script. So we're going to go to this property in our animation, animation ID. Click it. Press control V to paste the animation link that you got when you published it and just click enter and it'll reformat it to roblox asset id and whatever number you had and i'm going to rename this animation to knife throw animation there we go so now let's go and test if this animation actually works so let's go to our knife click the plus arrow add in a local script we don't really have to name it since it's going to be kind of temporary. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Let's define our tool, which is going to be the script dot parent. And then let's define our animation. So local and then equals tool wait for child knife throw animation. There we go. So now we're going to do a very simple script. So we're going to do tool dot activated connect a function, and this will run our animation. So this tool dot activated is activated whenever you left click or like left right trigger whatever what on, on whatever device whatever to activate your tool. And we're just going to load the animation on to our humanoid. The way you do this is you can do local 
loaded anim equals. Actually, we have to get the player first. So let's go to the top. I do local player. Player equals game. Dot players. Dot local player. And the reason we can do this is because we are on a local script. And each local script only has one player that it can get. So we can, and whenever you're loading animations onto a humanoid, you have to do it from a local script. You don't have to, but it's very recommended that you do. So we're going to define our animation by going player dot character dot humanoid load animation. Spelled that wrong, animation. And we're going to load the anim that we defined up here. And then that's it. So now all we can do is do loaded anim play. So let's test this out. Let's play this. Here we go. I have my knife out. And if I click, you can see the animation plays. And it just resets. And so we can also check to see if the animation events are working. So let's go to loaded animation. And then we can add a colon get marker reached signal and then so this is a function that gets like the marker reach signal of like an event and in these parentheses you put the name of your event so let's put the event charge and then we'll connect a function to it and then this function will have a parameter of the charge param so if we print our charge param you will see if i play this And if I pull my tool out and we click to cause the animation, you'll see in the bottom right, all of our numbers for our charge are being printed out. And then one last thing, we need to test our last animation event. So let's do loaded anim get marker reached signal pause animation. And we connect our function and just print should pause here. So let's play this again. And click for our animation. And you can see it says should pause here. So it works great. And that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Animation events are actually super interesting, super useful things that I've started using a lot. They're really nice and interactive. And in the next video, we'll actually start scripting our tool to use these animations and give all this information to the server so we can throw our knife. So make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I hope you guys have a nice day. And goodbye.